I just had a lovely interview with Eric Newton, and hopefully you got a chance to listen to or watch that. But this is the bonus episode about my crazy move from the Bay Area in California to Beaverton, Oregon. So let's unpack this. So I am recording this right before Valentine's Day. Uh, That is not why I'm dressed up. If you want to know why, you have to go back and watch uh, the interview with Eric. But since I'm already dressed up and I have the the lights and everything set up, um, welcome to my new recording space. It is uh, for our office, for my artwork, painting, sculpting, and all of that. So uh, if you aren't already a subscriber to the YouTube channel, please do that. Um, Please like this video, make a comment if you want. If you want to support what I do as a one-woman show, and I do mean one woman. I'm not one of those people who says, oh yeah, this is just a small podcast. I only have a few people that help me out. No, I do this all. Um, Yeah, it's all me. (laughs) So that's why sometimes there's a gap between between uh, episodes. So if you'd like to support what I do, please uh, go to buymeacoffee.com slash ESP Phoenix. And um, yeah, you can contribute there. But if you would like to contribute, but um, more than that, you want something really cool, like an original piece of artwork, go to esperanzapaints.com and you can get something like these cute little earrings or my mushroom sculptures or painting like that one back there that is partially finished. So it's not going to look like that when it's done. Anyways, thank you for being here. For those of you who listen to the podcast, um, you might have uh, heard the last one, which was short and basically just letting you folks know that um, I was about to relocate and it's been crazy as you would expect having to Uh, change states. As soon as I'm done recording here, I am going to go uh, to the DMV so I can get my Oregon driver's license. And um, I'm not planning on changing. I'm going to see if the DMV will let me do my driver's license like this because it's kind of fun. And, you know, it's not often that I dress up like this. So what the hell? Uh, You know, I'm theatrical anyway, so it'll it'll be cool. All right. First of all, It was, it was a fucking nightmare. It was a nightmare. Oh my gosh. If you intend to move, I recommend you don't do that around the holidays. It just worked out because of the way that my boyfriend's uh, contract with work was. It made more sense for him to start his new job in January. So that's great. We get that. But you've got the holidays trying to work around visiting family and friends and all of that, locating to a new new state, we had to find a place to rent. We had to work all of that out, which was really hard because, well, the kind of the nice thing was what we did was we drove my car up to Beaverton, Oregon. That's where we, where we are now. My youngest daughter, uh, Kira, who I've interviewed for the podcast before, and her fiance, Haina, live in Portland. And my daughter, Megan, and her husband, Josh, live in Seattle. So what we did was we drove to pick up my youngest daughter and her fiance. And then we drove them to Seattle so we could celebrate our holiday early. And uh, we celebrate hearth swarming which is actually a My Little Pony holiday because we're not religious and we don't care what day we celebrate. So it kind of worked out that we did uh, all of that mid-December. We had our little celebration for a couple of days. While we were in the area, we set up looking at 
a bunch of different rentals. We were we were looking on Zillow, we were looking on Trulia, we were looking on wherever to try to find the right rental house. And we had some really specific things. So but we I did a mind map and we put our wish list of the things that we really wanted. Um, one of them was to have some nature. Being in the Bay Area has been really bad for, for my health. Culturally, the way I was raised, I, I really need to be near nature. And the more city it is, the more people it is, it's really stressful for me. I really need to get out in nature and, and have that, that connection to the earth. It, it was a problem. So having a big backyard that that had some exposure to nature was important. It was also important because we have our two sweet little doggies and we wanted them to be able to have a backyard to run around in. We wanted a bigger space. I needed more kitchen because I like to cook and I like to bake my bread. Needed a washer and dryer because with my disability going to a laundromat, it's just not going to work. And I'm... I do most of that stuff since uh, my boyfriend works out of the home. So we had some some specifics that we needed. And then we were trying to get it in a certain price range, but that that's tricky too. Around the holidays, scheduling for viewings is hard. Like you find a place and you're like, oh, this looks like a really great place. Uh, you can't get a hold of them. They don't get back to you. Who knows their Christmas shopping? Whatever. Complicated time of the year to find a place. But we found a couple that we were really interested in. And uh, then we dropped my car off at my boyfriend's aunt and uncle's place who live nearby. Yay. So he's got family here. That's nice. And we flew back to the Bay Area to deal with that end of things. And basically, we had already started boxing stuff up. As soon as we knew that the job offer was there, we started boxing things. So I wasn't taking the time to rest that I needed to. I was boxing up anything that we didn't absolutely need all the time. I was boxing up the artwork. I was, you know, what clothes are we not wearing? What things do we not, don't absolutely need to have? I was working on downsizing and I was overdoing it. So I started to experience more and more pain. As those of you who listen to the podcast know, I am disabled. And the disabilities that I have are fibromyalgia, a form of arthritis called non-radiographic spondyl arthritis, which um, basically means I have an arthritis of my spine, which causes lower back and hip pain and feet pain. Um, I have a lot of nerve pain in my feet. You know, your nerves, all your nerves go through your spine. So I guess that's, that kind of makes sense. So those conditions, I also have a uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, things that triggers the fibromyalgia and arthritis pain the most uh, is lack of sleep and stress and overdoing it. Contaminated foods, if I eat foods that are really unhealthy, so I have to eat really clean like fried foods, um, things with glyphosate in them, different things can trigger inflammation. And if I have those, then um, it can set me into a flare and then I have a whole lot of pain and then it starts working up to being intolerable. In the midst of all that, we had to stop the packing thing then to celebrate with his family. So then we traveled to Fresno and we spent like five days there. So yeah, spending time with his family is great. His brother flew out from New York. DJ's really fun. We we did some, I don't know if you've ever heard of a of a card game called Sushi Go. <laughs> it's a blast. Check it out. Sushi Go. A lot of fun. I actually I, I ordered my own so that we can play with my adult children now that we are nearer to them. So that was fun, except whenever I am in a strange place, I don't sleep well. I have a whole episode about my chronic insomnia and all the things I do to get sleep. But whatever, strange place, weird food, different schedules, all of that made it uh, very difficult for me to get sleep. So then that started to build and it started to build. But it was just, it was extreme. There was a lot of stress, a lot of lack of sleep, so we get back home, we finish our packing stuff, and 
we had planned to try to take it easy because we then had one car, just my boyfriend's car, to take up. We hired a moving company so we didn't have to haul all that stuff. Um, we were on a second floor apartment, so that was not going to work. We scheduled it out that, okay, the, the moving co- company comes in in the morning. We should be done by midday. We're going to drive to the halfway mark, which was Mount Jasta, and spend a night there. And then do another little stent, spend a night somewhere else, then get there, then deal with the moving because it seemed like that's how it was going to work out for unloading the truck back at our place. But um, there was this weird thing where the moving company was like, no, we have to unload the day after tomorrow because if we don't, then it's going to be another, we're going to move your stuff to storage and then we got to get it out of storage and it's going to be like 13 days till you get your stuff. It was, it was weird and complicated. And let me say this, everybody wants to get the best deal they can on their move, but don't go with the bargain place because this place, this, this moving company was apparently cheap for a reason. Moving day comes. We've got most of our stuff boxed up except for a couple of oversized things. And of course, they've got to do their thing with furniture. And they're supposed to show up between 9 and 11 a.m. So, okay, anytime between 9 and 11. And they showed up like right at 9 with their truck. And I was like, great, we're going to get this taken care of. It's going to be it's going to be quick. We'll be out of here by noon, 1 o'clock. Perfect. They come in. The guys seem really nice. They spoke Spanish. So I chit-chatted with them a bit in Spanish. It's it's always fun to practice my Spanish a little bit. And um, they started hauling out our boxes, started wrapping up our furniture like they do. They've got these (laughs) these big blankets and like giant saran wrap. So they're, they're wrapping things. Things are going great. They have all of our boxes moved in probably... I want to say around 11, 1130, they had all of our boxes in that big moving truck. There was plenty of room to get our, our furniture in. And then they just stopped moving stuff. And here's where we get back to the pain. I was already in pain. I was having hip pain. And of course, all of our stuff is boxed up now and they're wrapping our furniture. So there's nowhere for me to sit. I'm sitting on the cold, hard floor, um, except for the few times that, like, I got in the car and I, I went and got us some coffee. Um, I went and got us some some breakfast, you know, things like that. I left to get things. But other than that, the only place to sit was really the floor. And that wasn't doing me any good in the pain that I was in. So everything grounds, grinds to a halt. And they tell us something about they're waiting for another truck. And it was, like didn't make sense. They bring this other truck and they park in a a different part near the the apartment complex and they kind of back the trucks together and move stuff from the one truck into this other truck. Well, once they get all the boxes in, it's filled that entire truck. There's no room to put our furniture. And I was like, wait a second, why are you moving to a smaller truck which clearly doesn't have enough space instead of, I mean, what was wrong with the other truck? Oh, well, that truck wasn't scheduled to go to Oregon. That truck needed to go to LA at a different time. So they were waiting for a different truck to come that they could load our stuff into. (laughs) And I have no clue why they did it this way. So while they waited for the other bigger truck, they moved all of our stuff into the smaller truck, which didn't have room for our furniture. And then they proceeded to move things back. Anyways, there was this musical truck thing going on with the back and forth of stuff. This is taking longer and longer. I am feeling more and more pain, not to mention pretty frustrated at this point. Um, the doors open because they're coming and going. It's a rainy day. I'm feeling bad for these movers because it's not their fault. This whole truck thing, you know that that is, that's at the main office. That's the people who do the scheduling and all of that stuff. It's, it's not these, 
these guys who are hired for their muscle. It's that's it's not their problem. We're paying for half the move on one end and half the move on the other. And they're doing all of this. So by the time all this musical truck bullshit happens, we didn't get out of there until six o'clock at night. Luckily, when when David had heard that this whole thing was changing as far as when we had to unload and when we had to be here, uh, he rearranged the hotels we were staying in. So he had rescheduled us that we had to be at Reading. So that was only three hours drive. Otherwise, it would have been a lot longer drive. After all of that, it was probably 930 before we got to our hotel in Reading. It was weird. It was, it smelled funny. Um, <laughs> I didn't like it. Uh, my, my little emotional supports dog snacks we, i've talked about a couple times he's the elderly guy the minute he got out of his carrier into into the hotel room he thought it was great he sniffed every corner of the space so yay for him um and then and then we had to get up the next morning and by the time i got into the car for our last leg of the journey the second day of travel here I was in excruciating pain. My hip hurt so bad. And I do take cannabis for pain. And I was. I was also using lidocaine patches. I took prednisone. I, I did everything that I could think to do. And I, it was just really, really hurting. And we had one more night. We stayed in Tigard, which is very close to to where we live now. We spent the night there so that the next day we could get all of our our stuff, be here to unload our stuff at our new place. By the time we went to pick up my car at his aunt and uncle's and we went in to see them, his aunt immediately looked, looked at me and she was like, you're in pain, aren't you? And I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. And we're talking level eight. We just hurt so bad. They showed up pretty promptly in the morning again. And the first really weird thing is, for some reason, the front window of the moving van had been shattered and the glass was on the street. Now, I don't know how this happened because we didn't witness this. It appeared to be broken from the inside, unless maybe the door was open when the window got broken. It was the, you know, if you... You have the regular like passenger window and then there's like that smaller window in front. That was the window that was broken. I have no idea why. So there's glass all over the streets. That was strange. And then they start moving our stuff in. So there's three members of the moving crew. The guy who we had met on our end, who was also the driver, he was an older guy. And then two younger, younger guys who I assume were from the area. And one of them in particular was just not handling our stuff nicely at all. I watched him with one of my one of our tubs of clothing on the dolly. He was coming to the door and he tipped it. He tipped the whole thing off the dolly at the front step. It it cracked open. S- clothing and stuff spilled into the dirt. He scooped it up, put it back into the tub, put it back in the dolly, carried it inside and put it in the room said nothing to me, said nothing to David. If I hadn't witnessed it, all I would have seen was the broken tub. I'm thinking, I got to wash all those clothes again. And he said nothing, not an apology, not, you know, it's like, okay, very rude. Just the way they treated our stuff was unacceptable. So as they're moving our stuff into the house, I am hurting and hurting. And I, again, waiting for the furniture to come in. So can I at least sit down? And then one of the, one of the issues was trying, we had decided we were going to buy a king size bed when we moved and we tried to order it ahead, but that was, there was a big complication. It didn't work out. So it's like, fine. Okay. Well, we're going to sleep. We're going to set up our smaller queen bed in the spare room because we have a spare room now and we'll just sleep there until we get the king bed. Great. So tonight we have a bed in our new house, except when the guy moved the bed in to set it up, he broke it. The, the connectors 
that attach everything together. He managed to pull it out or mess it up. And um, it could be repaired with super glue, but it takes like 24 hours to to set. So I'm running to the hardware store for super glue so that, that we can repair the bed that the moving people broke. It's like, come on. Uh, the most frustrating is I have this, it's a castle. I guess you could call it a sculpture. Anyways, its first life was as a lamp. So it's a large thing. It's it's pretty big. It's bigger than two bread boxes. And it's hand painted. It's been converted into a little table. And when they were packing it up, I said, you know, the tops of this are really fragile. Be careful with it. Well, these fools boxed it in a way so that the most fragile part of it actually stuck out of the top of the box. And during moving, they threw stuff on top of it, completely destroyed the top of it. So now I'm going to have to eventually get some crafting supplies and try to repair it. They broke a lamp. They misplaced things. We still don't know where um, where David's free weights are. I guess they decided to keep them. It was a mess. So the worst part of the whole guy's moving experience, besides the fact that they broke the bed, was that near the end of the afternoon when they'd gotten basically everything in the house except for they were glu- the one guy was gluing the bed, the two younger guys, for whatever reason, were in the street close to bro- blows. They got into a fight and were posturing and like threatening to hit each other. And the older guy is like out there telling them to knock it off. I don't know what the fight was about. I was in too much pain to give a fuck what the fight was about. But it was crazy. So the one guy, I think the youngest of them, who had chit-chatted with me a little bit earlier, he actually came in and apologized about the fight and you know tried to make some excuse about how the other guy started. I don't care who started it. Come on. Not professional at all. And and then I'm eager to get our stuff into our new space, but it hurts so bad. Like I couldn't stand for more than 10 minutes without wanting to sh- just scream out in pain. It hurt. Luckily, it has a really big bathtub here. It also has a hot tub, but the hot tub is not yet functional. So I was like, yay, at least there's a hot tub. But no, that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is so sweet. He ran out and got a bunch of Epsom salts. Uh, so I was having Epsom salt baths every night, trying to bring down the pain. Now, my rheumatologist, uh, a little while back, I said, okay, I've been doing some research, and you can do the research yourself, that they've done some experimentation with people who take prednisone for um, MS because there can be bad side effects. I mean, prednisone is a steroid, and you don't want to be on those all the time. It's not good for your gut health. It, it can cause a lot of different problems. Uh, muscle wasting, I think, is one of them. So you don't want to be on it all the time. It's not really good for you. And I get that. I, and I don't, I don't need any more complications to my health. But they found that people with MS, if they take uh, their, their dosage, all in one dose, like at the beginning of the week, then it doesn't have all of those side effects. I said, this is what I would like to try to do. I would like to be able to take a higher dose just one day and then let it work out of my system and do it again to try to keep the pain in check. And she agreed to that, but it's kind of um, an off-label way of prescribing it, it's not a usual way that they do it. So what she did was she prescribed me 10 milligrams a day. I don't take it that way. I take 20 milligrams like every 10 days, but it's based on how I feel. So I did have the prednisone with me going into this and it took, I want to say 10 days before I finally got my pain down to an acceptable level. And the other thing I got to do, I have to establish medical providers here. So that's going to be a bit tricky because I I really need to establish care. The pain got so bad during this trip that, um, that I'm ready to go back for injections for the arthritis. That's one of the few treatments that they offer is a biologic 
uh, injection, which you have to go in once a month and get a shot for. But this particular form of arthritis can be degenerative. It hasn't shown up on x-rays yet, but if I don't stop the inflammation, if I don't control it, it will eventually start breaking down my spine. And that's not good. So yeah, um, yeah, that that pain was a real a real check that um, it's time to accept this treatment that I'm not really looking forward to. If I'm lucky, I won't have to experience pain to that level again for a really, really long time because of the PTSD and the trauma. It takes a while to get used to a new space. Like I said, whenever I travel somewhere, I always have trouble sleeping. So being in a totally different house, I wasn't getting that restorative sleep either. So it was making it really hard to put things in check. But finally, finally got the pain in check and uh, had the energy to unpack everything and get everything taken care of. We're, we're unpacking boxes and discovering other broken things, which wasn't pleasant. I'm like, oh, there's something else they broke. Oh, there's another thing. Luckily, the most important things, they did not break. They didn't break his lightsaber because we brought it in the car. I also brought my sack. There were a few things that we just packed into the car. I'm like, oh no, I'm not trusting this in a moving truck. And I'm really glad that I didn't because, you know, after all of that disaster of move, finally recovered. And um, I would tell you the name of the moving company to spare you, except I don't know if it's because they're just totally incompetent or if they were so embarrassed by the whole fiasco of, of the situation, but um, they never billed us for the second half of the move. So we only paid half price. Is it worth it? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, my boyfriend is being compensated by his new job for moving expenses. But <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of the moving company. I don't want to alert them to the fact that they failed to bill us for the second half. If they did try to bill us for the second half, oh, I have a lot to say to them. But if you are planning on moving from the Bay Area to Oregon, you're welcome to private message me and I will tell you the name so you don't hire them because, oh my God, really, he's insane. But we're here now. The place is lovely. Uh, David is working to get the hot tub working. Can't wait until that's ready. I've got this lovely space now dedicated. Instead of uh, doing the podcast in our bedroom, I've got an office. I can record the podcast. It's also my art studio where I can paint. We've got enough space to do yoga. We're, we're getting back in the habit of that. And this office space, when the sun is out, this is Oregon, so it's sort of sunshine is sometimes few and far between. But when the sun is out, uh, it fills this room with light, and I've put up a little sun catcher. So, so I've got. Uh, I've got rainbows in the room when the sun is out. It's got a, a cool little electric fireplace. It's kind of cool to push a button and have, have some, some heat and fake flames. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. And big backyard. It's really beautiful. There's trees. There's a creek on the other side of the fence. We can't see it, but we can kind of hear it. We're settling in. Excited to be here. Excited to be close to my children. My birthday is in a couple of days, and I get to celebrate with my kids. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. That was the nightmare move, but we're here. We're here. We're settled. It's beautiful that now that I can walk again because the, the, the pain is in check, we did take uh, Chewy to Multnomah Waterfall and took a nice walk along the path. That was great. We went to this this great restaurant in Portland. It's called Mama's Kitchen. Definitely have to go back. Tried something called Irish nachos, which is like crispy fried potatoes, like 
like pan fries or whatever they call it. And then on top of that was cheese and bacon and chives and sour cream. So good. And it just happened to be Kitty Corner from Voodoo Donuts, which I guess is really famous, very popular. And David pointed out, hey, Voodoo Donuts is right over there. And there's no line, which I guess is rare. Sometimes the line goes all the way around the block. So we went across the Voodoo Donuts. And if you've never been, they've got some some crazy things. Like they got a donut that has like Captain Crunch. They've got a lot of crazy donuts. But um, the craziest one was this like giant chocolate frosted dick donut with flowers on top. It was massive. Uh, we wound up getting, I think it was the the Portland cream, and then I got the apple fritter, really good. And my my eldest daughter and her husband were jealous. Apparently, apparently Josh loves Voodoo Donuts, so we're going to have to get an order before we go visit them this weekend and and bring those to them. Settling in, loving our space, got a great walking path nearby, like five minutes away. Get to walk along a creek. Chewy is really enjoying it, and um, I'm using lots of light therapy. Got lamps everywhere, so I'm trying to get a lot of light in the morning so I don't wind up having any depressive issues because when it is cloudy all the time, um, that can happen. And I am one of those people who uh, are technically diagnosed with major depressive disorder, but it is in remission, so I'm trying to keep it in remission. It's gravy. I've already baked a couple of loaves of bread. i got to go feed my starter when I get off here. But I thought I'd fill you in as your bonus episode. That is the moving nightmare. <gasps> but here we are in Beaverton. And now that I have my own office space for the podcast, hopefully I will be posting pods more regularly. Thank you for joining me for Unpacking Life's Crazy. And until next time, take care of yourself and the ones you love. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Unpacking Life's Crazy. This is a one-woman show. You can show your support by liking and subscribing. Even better, contribute by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash ESP Phoenix to financially support what I do and get a super cool original piece of artwork, please visit my Etsy site, esperanzapaints.com. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. And until next time, take care of yourself and the ones you love.